Our next speaker is Professor Harri Ehtamo. Harri joined Systems Analysis Laboratory in 1983 and became a professor here in 1999. His main research interest is game theory, and indeed, today he will tell us about the games people play. Welcome, Harri. In the evening of my dissertation in 1989, <clears throat> I got a book. I got this book from my thesis supervisor, Raimo. The name of that book is Games People Play. It has been written by Eric Byrne, medical doctor, social psychiatrist. He made his career in the United States Army during Second World War and as a medical officer. And after that, he had practice in California, where he was dealing with social problems. He was a social therapist. The games he dealt with were life games like alcoholic, marital games, sexual games, party games, and so on. But what, what did he say in his book? What does he say in his book? He says that babies learn by, from stroking, babbling, laughing, whatever things, fundamental units. But it depends on the ability, their ability to receive stroking. And of course, also the stroker's ability to give, give it. And as a consequence, he says that uh, any social intercourse, whatever, has a biological advantage over no intercourse at all. This is, in a way, a trivial notion, follows from that. So I thought then that, that should I take seriously this? very basic things. Should I start from the beginning? But I'm serious, as I always am. So let's see what Ernie Berne says. Let's take an example he handles in this book. Uh, Schlemmil is a typical game people play. What does the word slemil mean? The meaning of it becomes clear from this story. Uh, <coughs> the story may take the following course. Mr. White, Schlemil, spills a glass of whiskey on the evening dress of his hostess. The host, Mr. Black, is boiling with anger, but the situation prevents him from showing it. After Black suppresses his anger, White apologizes. Uh, Black generously forgives him, but White also thereby scores a point. He has learned that he, a Schlemiel in the game, can behave like one with impunity. Eric Byrne continues the description of the situation. It then proceeds <coughs> to make other damage on Black's property. He breaks things, spills things, makes messes of various kinds. But after the cigarette burn in the tablecloth, the situation gets formidable to bear for both players. Although Mr. White has enjoyed quite a lot of spoiling things, because he has always been forgiven, while Mr. Black has stood like a suffering hero, they are both fed up with this game. Yet, 
it's very difficult to leave it. Berne now suggests an ingenious way to exit this particular game. After fight for the first time, says, I'm sorry. Black, instead of muttering, oh no, it's okay, says, Tonight you can embarrass my wife, ruin the furniture, and break the rug. But please do not say I'm sorry. This was Eric Byrne, medical doctor, describing this story. This way, Black's Black, Mr. Black, ends the game and gives also fight the possibility of quitting as well. Uh, <coughs> yet, it's a dangerous and perhaps courageous step to exit a vicious circle. Child, adult, parent game, so familiar to all of us, but this is the only chance, at least in deeply rooted, difficult games, those studied by Eric Byrne. But note now that Mr. Black cannot always end a game this way, because otherwise he cannot be an honorable host of his big parties. In mathematical game theory, we nowadays know these games or speak about exit games. Consider, for example, firms entering and leaving in a market where the timing is an important issue. Let's now leave Bern for a while and think about the games we did, we have, we have been working with during these 30 years. The games were of this form, or they were... Uh, the games we studied in the beginning, they have this form. Consider N farmers who graze their goats on the village field. Then the problem can be formulated mathematically and quite and under quite general, general conditions, the total profit for farmers in Nash equilibrium or competitive equilibrium is strictly lower than in the joint optimum. This is a trivial notion because uh, any outcome gives lower result than in the best outcome, which is joint optimum. This is trivial. And second, the total number of goats in Nash equilibrium is greater than in the joint optimum. This is also clear if we consider competition. In, in a competitive situation, agents effort more. They put more effort to things as in joint optimum. The question now is that, that if this relationship uh, is only over one summer, say, they graze their goats, then the result is competitive equilibrium. Otherwise, if there is a longer relationship between the agents, they can collaborate. They can learn to collaborate, and this is done by some kind of new equilibrium strategies, like trigger or, or whatever, did for that what we have. Okay, the problem, this, the nature of this problem was already noted by, by David Hume in Treatise of Human Nature in 1739, uh, <coughs> and he called it the tragedy of commons. G. Ha Hardin uh, made it very famous uh, in his widely cited paper in science in 68, where he applied it to environmental problems, this particular game. 
As I said, our first games had this nature. But perhaps the beginning of uh, game theoretical studies in our lab is the first one, optimal controller design by game theoretic methods. It was the thesis book of Raimo. Then there was contracting in fisheries management, Veijo Kaitala's dissertation book. I studied the so-called cooperative incentive equilibrium in resource management problems. It was my dissertation book and uh, then there is one intertemporal bargaining and electricity exchange. It was Jukka Ruusunen's thesis book. Jukka Ruusunen was one of the key actors in our lab in, in, uh, during the first 50 years. Then other to mention some topics, electricity exchange, numerical methods of pursuit evasion games, computational complexity of homicidal software game, a curious name, homicidal software, energy markets, wall race, the tournament process, this is already last 15 years what we have made mechanism design, duopoly games with cheap talk, Hausdorff dimension of some games, auctions in cognitive radio, cognitive radio, it was joint work with Nokia, pedestrians and ev in evacuations, and spatial games in exit congestion. Let's consider the last one. Uh, it's a physical exit game now. Here <coughs> it may occur, for example, in an evacuation situation from a burning building. Physically, it's clear that a pushing behavior of e agents make jams and clocking in front of the exit. But why and when this pushing behavior emerges and at the same time we perhaps explain the origin of panic as a consequence of rational as a consequence of rational behavior. So we make a game. Every square is is managed by one agent and every agent is playing a game. Uh, with his nearest neighbors. And the result might be like this. There is a polyformic, uh, polymorphic pattern of over 3,000 agents who are playing an evacuation game. The black squares are impatient agents and the white are patient agents. Actually, they play a hawk dove game, which is the basic game in evolutionary game theory. And nice equilibria form. But now, look carefully at that picture for a while. Then we have perhaps a better picture. It's where art and science meet. This piece of graphic was in a last winter in Kiasma, Museum of Modern Arts. Uh, it has been made by Matti Kujasalo 2013. I don't remember the name, but <coughs> this shows where art may go. Is it a, a fire, this red color there on the top, or is it a rising sun, we may imagine. Uh, we also applied our decision-making module, game theory, to a <coughs> continuous time egress sim simulation model, jointly with Technical Research Center of Finland. This project has been going on 10 years. 
and we have had very many publications in uh, that stuff. And a little bit more complicated situation may seem like this. <coughs> so this is a stuff this is a tough situation, and we may ask, what is the way out of this game? In the sense of Eric Byrne, I mean, <coughs> recent research has revealed that in, in catastrophes, for example, Estonia catastrophe or whatever, big catastrophes, about 75% are ordinary people they are taking part to the main game. Like the Hawk Dove game there, or Impatient Patient Agent game. About 10% of people are almost dead. They are very passive, but then there are 15% of agents who take their own way. They use their own trails. They go from windows, they go on the floor, they go on the cellars, and they are probably those who will survive. That was said by Eric Byrne. That's what games may be used for, to describe intercourse and interaction of agents. Thank you.